uh, oh, these guys are wearing dresses. And everybody's like, oh, he keeps talking about people wearing dresses. No, it's that not. That is it's, a weird thing. It's not like that. T look at it from a different way. Look at it. T show me one person that ever wore a dress in Hollywood unsuccessfully. Cat Williams on Joe Rogan? Brought to you by TatumStore.com. TatumStore.com. Get the merch link in the description section. The answer. Put in answer 20. Get 20% off this shirt and the hoodie. Uh, this is one of my favorite shirts, man. Donald Trump crossing Biden over it. Shit like AI. Anyway, like and subscribe to the channel. Y'all already know what to do. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and lay ties. I want to talk about uh, Cat Williams on Joe Rogan's show. Now, Cat Williams, I believe, was on Joe Rogan's show in the past. I think this is a new video. Well, Cat Williams is now back on Joe Rogan's show, and probably the reason why, because he went on Shannon Sharp's show, and that video got like 60 million views. And Shannon Sharp uh, cut about 30 videos from that one interview, and all of them averaged about a million views a video. Well, when you collect them all, they average probably about a million views a video. So that's 32 million just on clips, and then another 60 million on a two-hour interview. And so everybody named Mama want to get some, you know, some action uh, for lack of better terms, with Cat Williams. So I'm going to go through this clip. I didn't watch it, so we're going to watch it together, but I heard that he said some interesting stuff about the community. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And I wouldn't look past uh, him being the one to say it on Joe Rogan's show. And shout out to Joe Rogan, man. I, I really respect Joe Rogan, and I like uh, the platform that he's created. And I think a lot of people probably want to emulate that platform of just having real conversations with real people without all that. I mean, this ain't no great, this ain't no crazy broadcasting, right? It's not a, movie scenes and clips moving. I mean, he got, I think he probably got one producer. He got a, 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 a blanket behind him and just killing it. I, that, that's why he should be an example for you guys that you don't need to have all that stuff together before you make your podcast. Just start making a podcast. He made a two hundred million dollar contract. He wrote a clip. Like when I when I be like, uh, oh, these guys are wearing dresses. And everybody's like, oh, he keeps talking about people wearing dresses. No, it's that not. That is it's, a weird thing. It's not like that. Look at it from a different way. Look at it. Show me one person that ever wore a dress in Hollywood unsuccessfully. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you understand what a ritual is. Mm. So 20 years ago, I knew that transgenders was going to be a thing. It wasn't because I was a prophet. It's just I had gotten so much information that I understood the that pattern. things are secular. So I understood that the earliest I had seen that word transgender was um, Baphomet, the transgender. Um, and so I knew that the, in the ritual of Baphomet, the transgender, to show allegiance to him, you had to kiss his ass ring. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he say it like that, man? Cat Williams can be funny without trying to be funny. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Why is that so? I was not expecting him to say that. He had the kisses. Oh, my God. Boy, he going to get canceled so hard off of this. It's, gonna, it's insane. Really? And it said both of those things. So I knew that both of those things will become popular in the future. And that um, somehow calling people the goat would be normalized over the sheep being always the most popular reference. Mm. Let's just can't be can't be saying stuff that I'm like, wait a minute, bro. This dude on planet Earth, oh, he got some deeper knowledge or something. God damn, we got some good weed, cat. Jesus Christ. This must be the I'm, weed. I'm talk. trying to figure out how to jump in on that. Right. Which is my only goal. I always <laughs> wonder whether or not all the stories in the Bible, it's just where we are experiencing it. Like the, the mark of the beast thing that we were talking about earlier. If that mm -hmm. is not, if that is not, I think if, if you had to tell a story for so many years, yeah. Before anybody ever even figured out how to write it down. 
and you're telling a story about a civilization that allowed people to put brain implants in them. And then all of a sudden the brain implants were hijacked by machines and people became just meat zombies controlled by corporations. That would be the mark of the beast. That would be a demonic thing. If, it, if a demon tricked human beings into wearing a hat that turned you into a zombie, that demon would be like a, a famous character in books and folklore. But that demon exists and it's just technology. It just shows itself through this desire for the newest, latest innovations that are going to constantly fuel it becoming more and more powerful. And to one day it tricks you into letting it into its head like a vampire. Like the vampire stories, you, you had to let them in, remember? Prop I think I think Joe Rogan is on to something. Let me let me just say this. <laughs> let me give my perception of this whole and I talk about this on the cigar lounge on Tatum Plus. We just had a conversation about the Illuminati and all this other crazy stuff. I, I think that let, let me let me give you guys some some insight and context into scripture. This is why I believe this stuff is real. Like I'm not, it's not, I'm not a hyper religious person. I, you know, I, I, I often am against religion. I, I really am a relationship person. And I think people should have relationships with one another, relationships within uh, a community, which builds the church, not the church being the other way around. So I'm not really a religious person, but it's something to people who didn't know each other, who lived in different dispensations of time, claiming the same claims about us, the same God, that God is saying the same thing to these people. That there's no way they can communicate with each other. They weren't writing stuff down at that point. How are these people having a similar experience? And, the, and these people aren't just mythical creatures. There's literal evidence. When I went to Israel, there was evidence of King David, King Solomon, the prophets. There's, they, they got Places where they were writing, where they, were, they had temples, and you see stuff etched into the thing. Thousands of years ago, they're still excavating and finding civilizations under the ground that's now been covered in, you know, dirt and sand and all that stuff. It is mind-blowing to me. Like, we were talking, we were looking at some of the Greek stuff. They had LA Fitnesses way back in that day. They had a steam room and everything. We saw it all. It's something to this stuff. That I think modern human beings are so smart they become stupid. They cannot be childlike in their in their understanding, meaning that they're open minded and they can receive information. But like when you see it and you see people saying things like the prophets, they prophesied that this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, and the stuff actually happens. And these prophets were real people. And then you go through Jesus and you go through the apostles and the day of Pentecost and the Holy Spirit fell on them and they begin to speak in tongues. And I see people speaking in tongues today. That's thousands of years ago that, that this book said that that happened. I see people doing it today. And then you go on in these prophecies of in the end time, there's going to be itching ears. The gospel of Jesus Christ is an itching ear in our society today. People don't want to hear, they just want to hear anything. Paul and them talked about that thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago. And we see it manifest in the day. The mark of the beast, and I'll say this, I think that the Bible is somewhat of factual, I mean, it's like written literal and figurative at the same time. And I don't know which one is which depending on, you know, how, what parts were written. Some of this can be figurative, the mark of the beast. Like, I think that the vision that they saw then, I don't really know if they could articulate what they were seeing in the future. Because if you were back then and you see people holding stuff in their hand and it's now we know them as cell phones, if a prophet had a vision of somebody holding something in their head, they're not going to say they had cell phones in their hand. They're not going to know what that is. They may see it, but they don't know how to explain what they're looking at because that doesn't even exist in the present time. There's no way in the world people living in Jesus' day would think there would be such thing called the Internet, microchips. They, somebody may have a vision of it, and they may, they may have seen flying cars and stuff like that in, in this vision, but how do you explain it in, in the terms – in the, in the vocabulary in which was exposed to you at that present day. That's why when you hear things, you got to kind of put it in perspective as to what's going on today and how does that apply? Because the mark of the beast could be something that even we don't understand at this point. We think it's going to be a mark. It's going to say beast on your hand. And really the mark of the beast is just marking people. Whichever way they do it, they're going to be, people are going to be receiving this mark that designate them to, to who they serve. 
That can be a computer chip. That can be, I don't know. It can be anything. They talk about the locust coming out of the earth. I'm sure that Jesus and them never thought what a, what, what a helicopter was. These, these machines and flying vehicles could appear to be locusts coming out of the earth and tormenting people. Like, they may not have had the vocabulary to put that together. Now we're starting to get closer to it. We can start seeing that maybe there may, there may be actually big locusts coming out of the ground. Or there may be certain things that appear to be locusts that appear to be coming out of the ground. It, it, and I think that's what they, they're addressing. Like, there is, a, there is a satanic worship that's going on. We just, we, we just, we are so occupied with the things that are prevalent and important, important to us that I think we don't see it. Why is the Baphomet, why does it look like that? Why is it a transsexual bestiality type existent shrine? I mean, it's like beast, man, it's like male, female, it's got the horns. Why, why, who created that and why did they create it to, to be that way? And when you look at it, it's almost indicative of a, what we're struggling with in our society. Over-sexualized, which is the exposed chest. You got, you know, like people saying the GOAT. You know, people claiming everybody's the greatest of all time. And, and, and that's something Kat said, but I don't know if I – but I can see where he's coming from with that. Then you got all these people that do stuff behind the scenes, man. You, listen, Bloods and Crips have initiation. That means that when you want to be a Blood or a Crip, you get jumped in. The, the, everything in society for, from the beginning of time has to have an initiation to it. Any legit society has initiation. You come to America, you got to get your citizenship papers. There's an initiation. You got to take a test. You got to, you know, pass a background check. There's a thing to get you initiated. You go to, like, the Global Ambassador. Y'all don't know what a Global Ambassador in Phoenix, you get, you know, I think you got to pay, like, $100,000 to be a member. But there's a, you can't even be a member without being referred by another member. There, there's certain things that you have to either have, whether it's money or whether it's status, to be accepted into a, a private community. And so if you're going to be in the biggest, most elite private community, just anybody can get involved, and you got to have skin in the game. You can't just say, oh, I like you, Chris Brown. I'm going to be a part of y'all. All right, you in, bro. You sold a million records. Uh, no, it has to be something that compels you enough that if you ever try to leave, they can have so much dirt or something on you that you that you would never leave in peace. You would never expose what went on in peace, so you'd be tormented forever. Maybe there is a ritual where you get you know, filled with a, with a, with a ritualistic God, and then you, you, you're not even who you used to be. You become another person. It's dark out there. Witchcraft in Louisiana, big for witchcraft. Tarot cards, Ouija boards. Like, this stuff is real. There's a demonic realm out here. And I think that what Joe Rogan and them are talking about is, is touching on it. Y'all should probably go watch the full interview. That's enough for me. I'll see y'all in the next one. I'm out of here. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoy my content, I guarantee you, you will enjoy Tatum Plus. Brand new platform that we just launched. Exclusive content, behind the scenes of speaking engagements, all the stuff you can't see on all of my social media platforms. We'll always have free content, but the extra stuff for people that really love my content will be on Tatum Plus. So go join Tatum Plus today.